Welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to practice making lists of items. We can create numbered lists or bulleted lists. Let's begin by listing some basic school supplies. Pencil, calculator, ruler, notebook, graph paper. Let's compile and see what this looks like. So this doesn't really look anything like a list, it's all on one line. Remember that a single line break in your code does not produce a, a line break in your document. Now if I wanted to, I could force line breaks and I could even type the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in front of my items to create a numbered list. But I don't want to do that because later on if I decide to rearrange things or insert an extra item into my list, I would have to renumber everything by hand. Instead, we're going to let the code do the numbering for us. And we do that by going just in front of the first item in our list, and we're going to type backslash, begin, and then in curly brackets, if we want a numbered list, we're going to type enumerate. Now notice um, when I hit enter, it automatically put in the matching end enumerate tag. So I'm going to move that to the end of my list. So after you've listed your last item, you type that matching tag backslash end enumerate. And let's compile. And we see that we actually get a compiling error. So we have to do a little bit more than just say, where does the list begin? Where does it end? We have to actually indicate each separate item in the list. So in front of each new item, you type backslash item. And we'll compile. And now I have my numbered list or my enumerated list of five items. If I wanted to go back and add an item, let's say after pencil we're going to add the item paper, I would simply on a new line type backslash item space and then paper. We can build that and we see paper is now number two and every other item in the list is renumbered appropriately. I can also create lists within lists. For example, one of our items, number five, is notebook. Maybe I want to indicate that I need various sections in my notebook. So I want to have maybe a section for assessments, a section for notes, and one for homework. But I don't want to have those numbered as six, seven, and eight. I want that to be a sublist of number five. So just like you would do in a normal outline, we can label those with A, B, C. And all you need to do is go to your code where you want to start your sublist. And on a new line, we're just going to use that same code. Begin enumerate, type the items in our list, and then end enumerate. Now I'm going to indent just to kind of organize my code um, and make it a little easier to see where my sublist is to distinguish it from my um, parent list. So I start with backslash, begin, in curly brackets, enumerate, and type my items. So I have an item for assessments, backslash item, we want a section in our notebook for homework and a section for notes. Okay, and then we have our end enumerate signifying the end of this sublist. Okay, so let's compile. And sure enough, we have a sublist under number 5, A assessments, B homework, C notes. And if we wanted to, we could even create a list within this sublist. Under assessments, maybe we, we want to distinguish between quizzes and tests. So I'm going to indent again here, slash, begin, enumerate, 
type my items. I'll have an item for tests and one for quizzes. And then we have our end enumerate to finish that list. We'll build and now instead of using lowercase letters ABC we have um, the, the one, two, three, etc. So we could keep going as many levels deep as we want. Right now I have a list that is three levels deep. By using the code to create our list for us, we don't have to worry about the formatting. It's going to automatically number things appropriately. It's going to space them out. It's going to put our indents and make sure everything lines up properly. If we want to create a bulleted list instead of a numbered list, the code is very similar. Just instead of the word enumerate, we're going to use the word itemize. So I'm just going to copy the work that I've done here. And I'm going to change enumerate to itemize. And you have to change the begin tag and each of the end tags. So there's my begin and my end tag and we can right now if we compile it I'm going to have a combination of both. Some of the items are going to be bulleted and some of them are going to be numbered. The ones under inside the enumerate tags are going to be numbered. So let's build this. And there we have some bullets and some numbered. Let's change them all to bullets. So change our enumerate to itemize. and build and you can see that for each um, for each next level it changes the symbol so in our first level we have circular bullets in our second level we have the dashes and in the third level we have an asterisk symbol we can even specify what symbol we want to use it doesn't even have to be um, a shape it can be a word instead for example, let's make a short list of some mathematical properties. Let's start with a numbered list. So slash begin enumerate and my first item will be the commutative property of addition. So I need to go into math mode and I have A plus B equals B plus A. My second item will be the associative property of addition. Again, in math mode, I want A plus the quantity B plus C is equal to the quantity A plus B plus C. And let's go ahead and add a third item, the distributive property A times the quantity B plus C equals AB plus AC. Oh, and I see I have a compiling error on line 43. Uh, yes, I accidentally typed a curly bracket instead of parentheses. Let me just fix that and recompile. Good. Okay, so we have our list of our three mathematical properties here. Instead of um, labeling these as number one, number two, number three, I can change the label by using square brackets. I'm going to go back to each of the items and after the word item in square brackets I'm going to type the name of the property. So the first one is the commutative property and the second one again in square brackets 
is the associative property. And the third item in our list is the distributive property. So now instead of the numbers 1, 2, 3, our labels are commutative, associative, distributive. Notice that our labels are right justified, which may or may not look the way you want it to. So you want to be careful, um, especially if you have a long label. It might look a little bit funny. And that wraps up our tutorial on making lists in LaTeX.